Hello, everyone. This is another Black Conservative. I am Ryan Bowling. Thank you all for joining me. What I want to talk about in this video is a incident that happened in Washington, D.C. that shows the uh, destruction of the family unit in this country and how that certain parents sometimes, because of the fraction of the family, have to take drastic measures to deal with their children. And what I'm talking about here is an article I'm about to read from Broad Brown News in reference to a mother in Washington, D.C. who turns her 12-year-old son over to the authorities because he was involved in a shooting. Now, some of you may have already seen this in one of my one-minute videos or may have seen it on the mainstream news about the 13-year-old boy that tried to rob a, uh, what was it, a, D a, a um, federal officer, and he was shot and died. The boy that died was 13 years old, but he had an accomplice, a 12-year-old that was with him, according to this article. And according to this article, the mother turned this 12-year-old over to the authorities. Now, we're going to get right into this article. I'm going to read this article to you. I'm going to give you my, my uh, opinion on what I feel that this is all about. It's a tragic situation, but it just goes to show you where we are morally in our country, where we are with our, in terms of our families. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And that's all I'm going to say right there. I'm going to get into the details of that after we read this article. So let's get right into this. Uh, this is a sad situation, but, you know, sometimes you have to do these type of things. Uh, it says, a Washington, D.C. mother handed her 12-year-old son over to police Wednesday as he is suspected of an attempted carjacking that left his 13-year-old... <coughs> excuse me, accomplished dead. The woman called police on October 31st after recognizing her son in a picture shared online by law enforcement reported the Daily Mail. The boy who has, the boy who has not been publicly identified was processed in a juvenile court later that day. His alleged accomplice, Bernard Tony Jr., was fatally shot by an off-duty federal security officer when the two boys attempted to carjack him, police said. So sad. The incident occurred 12 and 13 years old, but let's go home. The incident occurred at the intersection of 6 and D streets in the corridor of the U.S. Attorney's Office, the Department of Justice, Justice's Antitrust Division, and the D.C. Courthouse, according to Fox 5. Okay. Uh, and then the article goes on to say, uh, Authorities believe Tony opened the passenger side door and entered the vehicle and that the unnamed 12 year old opened the driver's side door. I'm sorry. Authorities believe Tony opened the passenger side door and entered the vehicle and that the unnamed 12 year old opened the driver's side door and told the officer to, quote, get the blank out. You know what this is, the boy said, according to the off-duty officer, who told police that the boy appeared to have a gun in his pocket, causing the officer to respond by opening fire with his own weapon. Listen to the terminology of this boy. You know what this is. What kind of movies or what, what in, who is around him that's influencing him to talk like that? Because usually people that say, you know what this is, are usually adults who are trying to rob someone else. This is so sad. This is so, so sad. Tony, a seventh grader who was shot during the incident, and the Tony, a seventh grader, was shot during the incident, and the 12-year-old ran away. The gunshot shot proved fatal for the 13-year-old who was pronounced dead at the hospital later that night. No guns were found in his possession. He was arrested in May in connection with several such crimes that occurred in Southeast D.C., the Daily Mail noted adding that his school principal described the late boy as, quote, a smart and talented student, end quote. It's always that, right? Smart and talented. But this smart and talented boy tried to rob someone and told him, you know what this is, but he's smart and talented. Well, he didn't use his smarts and intelligence. I hate to say it this way, but he didn't use his God-given smarts and intelligence to do the right thing. Let's go on. This is terrible. Tony was known to the Metropolitan Police Department, and it's, and it's just unfortunate that this particular incident happened on Saturday night that caused him to no longer be here, said Acting Chief of Police Pamela Smith. Tony's principal also spoke of his, quote, natural comedic ability and love of making people laugh, especially when he would joke that he was the principal of Kelly Miller MS. Kelly Miller MS, Vineyard, 
also loved to play basketball and spend his free time on the court with his friends. This is a really, really poor report, the magistrate judge said Wednesday after reviewing the 12-year-old's history, which includes a list of serious behavioral issues. See, they omit those type of things. And unfortunately, you know, these are African-American young men. I, 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 honestly, I don't know. Let me take that. I don't know. Uh, uh, I think the uh, young boy that died was African-American as well. Uh, but, you know, this is African-American. So I don't you know, you know, African. I don't know if the police officer was, was white or black or what. I don't know. Or the security officer, white or black. I don't know. But uh, I'm pretty sure the mainstream media spun this some kind of way, made it a racial issue. I'm pretty sure. But let's go on. She was notified that he had been smoking marijuana since he was 11 and he had severe anger management problems. The mother who turned the troubled preteen in said that she had previously contacted a local hospital to help her son's issues so as to prevent this sort of violent event from occurring. So sad. The boy is being held at the city's youth service, services center, a juvenile detention facility until at least Monday when he's due back in court. And that's the end of that article right there. And I hate to read this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But uh, I have to deal with these kind of subjects because that's what's going on, you know? And it's so sad. I mean, unfortunately, like I said, I did one of the one mini videos on this very subject. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, and, and unfortunately that young man, uh, a young boy died. But the mother struggling with her inability to control her son or to maintain any uh, 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 parameters of discipline with him felt the need to turn him over to the authorities because she could no longer do anything with him. Her purpose, uh, according to the article, was to prevent this type of stuff from happening. Now, this is sad, but what I see here, first and foremost, and I'm pretty sure a significant number of you that are listening to this video and watching this video are probably thinking the same thing, that clearly this, this young boy had no father figure in his home. And if there was a father figure, because you can be a male in the home, but not necessarily be there. Just because that male is there physically doesn't mean he's there emotionally, doesn't mean he's there psychologically, doesn't mean he's there spiritually. He can be there, but he can be a ver verbally abusive person. He could be someone that just come in and get his freak on or whatever, and he's gone it could be a number of those type of things, but it seems evident to me that clearly this young boy and the other 13 year old boy that died. But clearly this young boy here has no had no father figure in his home. And this goes back to the breakup of the home. That's why I feel that it's very important that the parents, whether they are, whether both parents are, are, are present or only one parent is, is present to try their best to sit down and talk with their children. Find some time. I'm just giving some counsel here, but find some time. You know, if you're a single parent, that doesn't mean that, that, that your child is destined for destruction. This is just, this, this incident here is just an example of parents who are not, of single parents, in my view, because she, she, she has to be single. Okay. You can't be a male figure in his home, uh, in the home, obviously. So, this is just an this situation is just an example of a single parent who has not disciplined their child the way they should be disciplined because obviously if she did he wouldn't be running a rook muck but just because you are a single parent does not mean you can't raise your kids with strong morals and strong values i've seen it many many times over it's just more it's i it's just better when you have two parents in the home okay it's better that way it's better that way and unfortunately, because of this lack of discipline, because of this lack of teaching, because of this lack of uh, inner home training, this young boy have found it upon himself to try to be cool and try to get in with the, you know, get in with the crowd. Twelve years old, twelve years old, twelve years old. And now the mother feels the need to turn him over to the authorities. And I'm going to be real with you, man. Look, you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that the, the, the authorities are going, to, are going to mess him up, but the authorities are not parents. I mean, they're just not. They're just not, you know, and, and it's just so sad that this kind of stuff has had to happen, you know, and I, that's what I wanted to say on it. I just wanted to say that this shows the destruction of our family unit in this country. But just because the family unit is has been divided and has been has been drained of all of its strength 
or I, I won't say drained of all of his strength. Let me rephrase that. Just because the family unit has to a large extent been uh, uh, severed here and destroyed in this country doesn't mean there isn't a remnant of proper parenting, whether it's both parents or one parent. It still can be done. This goes back to the family. OK, it's still and I, and I adhere to that and I hold to that 100 percent. It still goes back to the family, whether once again, it's both parents or one parent. It can still be done. It's up to the parents at home to lay down the foundation. And maybe if the parents, the, and I, I know somebody argue with you, know, Mr. Bowden, you know, there's a lot of parents that are kids themselves. You know what I'm saying? And, and they're messed up. And I know, I know, I know. But let's be realistic. We're surrounded, whether you are a parent that, you know, you're a young person yourself that ended up having a kid out of wedlock or whatever, and now you got to raise this child. Uh, let's be realistic. We are surrounded in this country with all kinds of sources, resources of information that can educate us on how to be an effective, per effective parent or an effective person, because being an effective parent is preceded by being an effective moral person. So because we're surrounded by all of these uh, uh, resources, libraries, you can go to the library, local, I'm pretty sure it's a local library down there where this lady, this mother was, local library, you can go to local libraries, you can ask questions with people that you can talk to the preacher, I mean a real preacher, not this nonsense we see today. I'm talking about a real preacher that's, and yeah, I, I talk about preachers, I talk about the book because I believe that's, that's the foundation, but I'm not going to get into the, all the details of that. But we talk to a preacher, talk to someone that will really help you be the best that you can be, whether you, uh, uh, whether it's both parents or a single parent. In this instance, this is a single parent. Talk to them. There's still no excuse. There's still no excuse is the bottom line, okay? It, because we have so many resources available to us that can help us to matriculate through this fog of immorality, violence, wokeism, ultra left liberal policies in the schools and in the college campuses, violence in the music, you know, sexual, you know, sexual, you know, sexual explicit lyrics in the music, violence in the movies, violence everywhere. I mean, it, the young people today are surrounded by so much negativity that if a person is does not have their mind filled with something that's going to motivate them, that's going to empower them, it could drive them crazy. But as I said in the end of this video, we are surrounded by a bevy of resources of positivity, of building one's character that can help us as single parents be able to matriculate through this fog of disaster that we call America right now. And that's my word. Maybe you can call it a preaching or advice, whatever. That's my word, man. It can be done. It can be done. And the end of the video on this. This is an unfortunate situation once again, but I'm thankful that this young boy did not lose his life like the other young boy did. It could have ended up a whole lot worse. He could have lost his life. And to this, he ought to be thankful. And hopefully, prayerfully, this young boy will see that his mother turning him over to the authorities was what he needed. Now, let me end the video on this. I'm going to truly end it on this because this is what I wanted to speak on too. Some people may look at this and say, well, man, her turning her son over to the authorities, that's just crazy. That's going too far. I wouldn't do that. That's my son. I wouldn't do that. Maybe you wouldn't. But you got to understand her plight, what she's dealing with. This is probably a young mother who doesn't have the moral upbringing, who probably was caught into a situation where she ended up getting pregnant without, without it, with it being planned. She ended up maybe getting pregnant without, you know, not being married or whatever. I don't know. But I'm just making a scenario. And ended up having a baby, you know, uh, the boyfriend probably tried to talk her into getting an abortion. She didn't want to get an abortion, so she kept the baby. But it was hard on her, you know. She may have not had the foundation of strong morals and principles that, that some uh, kids have. So she had to try to do the best that she could do. She was probably raised in the hood, surrounded by all these hood rats, you know. All this negativity, all this, you know, uh, uh, this provocation of white racism and, and you know, white man this and the white man that. She's probably, she's probably surrounded by that nonsense. So she probably had a chip on her shoulder 
you know, and then she put that, 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 that mentality is poured into, into her son directly or indirectly, and it influences his perceptions. So then he goes out and lives that out. Okay. So we got to look at the bigger picture. We're not in that situation. So we don't know what we would do, but she did what she felt she needed to do better to do, to turn him over to the authorities then to say, forget it, I don't want to deal with him anymore, and him end up getting shot and killed. Like his accomplice did, like the young other boy did. That's all I'm just that's all I'm saying here. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is the best choice that the mother could have made, you know, or made another choice? What do you think? I think she did the she did the right thing by turning him over. Because she couldn't handle him anymore. That's what I think. Uh, but what do you guys think? Give your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless you all. See you again.